So the Payday 3 patch has finally landed, and in this video I'm going to give you a rundown of what's changed. To answer the main thing on everyone's mind, no, they haven't added an offline mode, and no, they haven't changed the levelling system. Yet. On the Payday website, they have confirmed this is something they will be working on in the future. Now, this patch has added a boatload of bug fixes and quality of life features. If you look at their website, they've posted this article for everything that's been added in patch 1.0.1. .1. And starting with some much needed PS5 features, they have added the pre-order and edition specific items for PS5 players. This one was huge. The fact that some people had paid for content and they just straight up weren't given access to it is really bad. So it's really good they fixed that. Uh, and they've also updated the aim assist for PS5 players. I had seen a few Reddit posts about how bad that was. I'm personally on PC, so I've not witnessed any of these things. But if you are a PS5 player, make sure you get the update. And please drop a comment down below just to confirm these changes have actually been made. And a big one is that they've closed the weapon experience exploit in 99 boxes. One of my first videos on the game was how to use that exploit. So um, it's probably about time they fixed it. It was live for over a month. And to be honest with you at this stage, I think everyone's weapons are maxed out. Two main quality of life features that I think are worth calling out is that the last radio call will now provide a last warning before the alarm goes off and will not be interrupted by other radio dialogues. Basically saying it's a lot clearer when you're about to run out of radios. They've also added a fix for the cleaning it out achievement to pop up when the criteria is met. Coincidentally, yesterday I was live on Twitch just doing some achievement hunting and this is an achievement I unlocked. Towards the end, I wasn't sure if I'd got all the bags and when you've invested as much time as you need for this achievement, it really is stressful not knowing if you've got all the bags so that's a really nice quality of life feature to add just a few of the notable fixes they've added uh, around crashes uh, when it comes to doing things like answering radios or uh, there's one that says when you're vaulting near the heist end i've not personally come across that but that would really annoy me if you've sunk half an hour into a stealth heist and just by vaulting something it crashes your game I can understand the frustration there, so it's really good they fixed that. They also go on to list a number of other things they fixed that were causing the games to crash. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you want to pause the video and read through this list here, it is really important that they're fixing how often the game is crashing, because it will undoubtedly push a lot of players away from the game. Hopefully these fixes can draw some people back in. Next we've got this balance section, and they do call attention to Last Man Standing and Armour Up. These perks are basically performing a bit too well and they're going to nerf them. They're also saying that armour is considerably more desirable compared to ammo and health, which the ammo mechanics themselves are working as intended, but they do want to put a few more ways for players to restore it in the game. They have said that they think health is underperforming a bit right now, and that's something they're going to fix over multiple updates. Probably the more we play, the more they'll be able to tweak it to perform how they want to. Going on to skills, the main thing that stands out to me is that the battering ram skill can no longer be used to open the blue keycard door on Rock the Cradle or the front door on Touch the Sky. For weapons, they've added the ability for knives to be thrown through broken shield visors. I did try this in the past and just really questioned my aim, but it's good to know that it was actually a bug. And they've also fixed an issue where throwing knives couldn't be picked up if your equipped weapon, whether that's your primary or secondary, had full ammo. If you're trying to do a stealth run where you're only using throwing knives, that could really mess up your heist, so glad they fixed that one. In terms of enemies, dozers are actually getting a bit of a nerf. It seems like they were using their shotguns a bit too far away from players, so they're going to have to be a bit closer to begin using that. They've also updated enemy flashbangs to apply the flash effect more consistently, so I have seen this a few times where you can almost look at a flashbang and just not take the effects of it, so it makes sense they've addressed that bug. And players can no longer open doors leading to enemy spawn locations. That is good. It's a shame if you were farming those, but realistically for a balanced game, it's good that they fixed that. Next up we've got the technical section. There's been a UI update for the favour rewards in the results screen. If you're unaware, you can unlock favours for other heists, like unlocking the elevator in Golden Shark, for example. You can unlock that favour by completing a different heist. As it stands, people were quite unsure how you've unlocked those, so now when you finish a heist, it will tell you that you've unlocked a favour for a different heist. They're also adding icons for when buffs are blocked due to certain skills. 
that'll be really useful if you're trying to create a build and you want to try it out you can see what's being blocked because of certain skills you've selected player stats are also now shown in the results screen when failing a heist so even if it's not being successful you can still complete challenges and you, you can now actually review your stats in there as well they've also fixed an issue with the report player option not appearing unfortunately in the game there are a lot of players that like to troll or some that have quite offensive usernames so it's good to know you can kick them out of your party now other than that it sounds like they've fixed quite a few issues for when you're trying to play with friends friends menus basically not working correctly hopefully a lot of those should be fixed now next up we've got audio and i know this has been memed a lot on reddit and on the internet so one of the key things to call out here is that the shared voiceover will no longer play when players return to the main menu after cancelling matchmaking. It's really annoying those voiceovers at the beginning of the heist. At least when you cancel your matchmaking, you don't have to keep listening to it anymore. Something that I quite like they've added is that there's going to be more small talk conversations between civilians and employees. It's probably going to make the world feel a little bit more lived in than it currently does. And one for all the wolf fans out there, unfortunately he's now going to whisper for a medic bag instead of shouting for one if you're in stealth. All the other ones on the list just sound like they were supposed to be in the game. Things like the sound of a dead body dropping onto the floor when you drop a dead body onto the floor. The visual section is pretty bog standard, making sure things like deployables aren't left floating in the air if they're put on a surface that then moves. It does actually highlight on here they'll fall onto the ground if that happens, so it will make the game feel overall a lot less glitchy. Also just things like standing on the van in road rage could cause other players to look glitchy as it's moving and really jumpy. That should now be a lot smoother. Other than that, feel free to pause and read through, but they're your standard visual bug update. For the heist section, there's a number of bugs across every heist. The main ones that jump out at me are that they've added a fix for the security door that was openable without the blue key card on 99 boxes. If you're unaware of that, in 99 boxes, you can basically just walk into the camera room. You didn't need the blue key card, even though the scanner was next to the door. And these two here about loot bags. So some bags will get stuck on the forklift on road rage and some bags will disappear when throwing them onto the zip line on Touch the Sky. All really annoying things. If you've got the loot, it's already bagged. You just can't move it or it just disappears. It's good that they're fixing bugs like that. And a notable one, if you're stealthing Rock the Cradle, they fixed the issue where the bouncer wouldn't let you proceed into the VIP area, despite showing him the VIP invitation that you can go and get. Finally, some of the known issues that they're addressing here is that Challenges can get stuck showing one of one complete, but aren't actually giving you the reward for that. So you can now unlock them by completing the challenge again or completing the highest difficulty challenge in that sequence. Basically meaning if you have to play something 10 times, you obviously can't replay that. However, if the next milestone is to play it 20 times, it would unlock both of them for you then. And the weapon charms and death wish rewards from the Payday 2 to Payday 3 cross promotion campaign, aka infamy rewards, haven't been properly granted to players. They're saying in the next patch they hope to have this resolved. Now at the time of recording this, I've not had a chance to play Payday 3 after they've made this update. But I do want to call out, they haven't mentioned fixing the C-Stack glitch, which if you've seen my last video means you can buy as many C-Stacks as you want at the lowest price available. They also don't mention fixing the glitches where you can hack a guard's radio and then melee them to lock them in place or the bug that allows you to take down the lead guard and permanently answer his radio. If you have played the updated game, feel free to drop a comment to let me know if those bugs are still in the game and if they can still be used to complete heists. Hopefully you found this breakdown useful. If you want even more details on the patch, feel free to click the link in the description. You can go and read through all of them on their website. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.